Hey guys, welcome. I'm Dan. I'm uh, joined here by Chris. And uh, during the bye week, we're just going to do uh, this little thing where we're going to go over a couple plays from uh, Eric Flowers uh, this year. We know that uh, Flowers is a big talking point for, for a lot of people who follow the Giants, a lot of the fans, a lot of the writers. Uh, so we're just going to kind of break down a couple plays. Uh, I think we got two each. Uh, that we're going to to go over. So we know uh, Jerry Reese just had the uh, his press conference uh, the other day, the one time during the season where he talks, and said that Eric Flowers isn't the problem. And I think we all kind of know that, but I think he's just kind of a microcosm of what the problem is and why the Giants are 1-6, and six, just from kind of where he was drafted um, to how he's been treated over the past couple years and that he was still the starting left tackle I think going into this season I think all of that just kind of shows just little pieces of why the Giants are one in six uh this season so I think I'll let uh Chris come in and you can kind of add to that if you have any other thoughts uh I think you pretty much covered it why don't we just get to it all right so we are just going to get to the plays here uh, so just uh, bear with me while I uh, share my screen with with Chris here. Um, so we're going to get uh, to this first play. And while that goes crazy. Um, so here we go. Uh, Chris, you got this? Yep, you're up. Okay. So uh, this is a play uh, from the Tampa Bay game this year. Uh, this is a third and two play. Uh, we're going to get Flowers is over at left tackle right here. Um, so we're just going to kind of go through this slowly. So here's the thing about this play. It's not so much that Flowers is getting beat to the outside, which he is. Um, this is a, a third and two play uh, at full speed. This takes about a second and a half. I timed it a couple times. I got between like 1.5 and 1.7 seconds of Eli to release this ball. And if we look at just where, when he releases it, if we want to look at where the receivers are, so this is the intended target here. That's Evan Ingram. But we got a guy down here. We got someone here and here. There's four receivers out in this route. None of them are have really had time to create separation or are really ready for the ball. And this is part of the problem of what Flowers has created uh, and kind of the offensive line in general, but I mean, we are talking about Flowers here. So it's just a sped up offense. And by the time Eli gets the ball, he's trying to get it out because if he doesn't, there's this guy right here who's already coming at him. So here, if we look for the goal line... Here's Flowers. Uh, and here's one thing we're going to bring up a little bit. Notice how wide uh, Flowers is uh, from, from John Jerry here. So we start it. This is just, that's not really a, a power position. He has no leverage here when he, when he makes his first contact. If you, if you look, his feet are right together. He's perpendicular to the line of scrimmage. He is beat. And this isn't one of Tampa's better pass rushers either. This is a guy who is, uh, I believe, signed off as an undrafted free agent in 2016. So it's not even like it's a, it's a Noah Spencer or even, I mean, Gerald McCoy blew up this game and in the middle. Uh, it's not even Robert Ayers. So this isn't great. And this is just kind of really what has gone on with, with this offense. It's It's been quick. Um, Eli has, uh, I looked up for the NFL's next-gen stats, the 10th quickest time to throw. He's at about an average of 2.5 seconds. And for an offense that's been pretty vertical heavy for a while, that's just not enough time. Um, so let's, uh, let's go over to the next play here. And that is 
here, this is going to be a play. Now, these next three plays are actually going, are going to be from the Seattle game this past week. Uh, so here's Flowers. Uh, again, uh, so we're going to really look at what is going on here and how far apart he is from Jerry. If you look at the difference between that and what is between Fluker and Pew over on the other side. So that is going to play into what happens uh, for the rest of the time here. So we see this is a little little loop in from uh, Frank Clark. <clears throat> now, I actually uh, sent this play over to, to Jeff Schwartz, uh, former Giants offensive lineman, and um, uh, now writes for SB Nation and uh, a couple other places. Um, so he talked about how, how this distance really sets up this play to happen. So when Flowers comes back, he has no contact here. Jerry is playing this play just straight up like he should. He's one-on-one -on -one with his guy. But by the time Clark loops around, Flowers has already lost complete leverage. And because Jerry has been blocking like he's supposed to, there's no time to pass off. Now, this is something Fluker's done pretty much his entire career of being this far outside. Um, so we're not totally sure if this is something he kind of does on his own or if it's his, what the coaches have been telling him to do uh, to kind of help him cheat to the outside. Uh, but it's something that when this play goes off, there's nothing you can do about it, and it's pretty much already lost when he lines up because Seattle knows he's going to be that far outside, and they're going to send the defensive end inside. There's no way to switch and block him. And, I mean, it doesn't end up in a sack, but it's an incomplete pass. And just to build on this, I separately talked to Duke Manweather, who most people who read Big Blue View fairly often should know. He's got a pretty good relationship with us, with the site. And it's something we've talked about as well. And he has said the same thing. If that spacing, that extra at least half again distance from the left guard to the left tackle over what the right guard and right tackle have basically puts Flowers out on an island and he has no help and it pretty much opens up a two-way go for the defensive end. And he can't figure out why they would do this either, whether it's either coached out or coached in or not coached out. It puts a lot of stress on Flowers, and he isn't a Joe Thomas, Tyron Smith-type tackle who could even think about pulling this off. But there it is. Yeah, so of course, pretty much any time you do something in football, if you end up Helping yourself out to cheat one way, you're going to be a lot more vulnerable when somebody brings you in the other way. So when Flowers is, is getting ready for him to you know, come around the outside here, when he goes in, he's got nothing. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll bring up the next play here. And uh, this is actually uh, going to be one of the better, better uh, reps from Flowers. Um, so, yep. Chris, I'll let you uh, take this one. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, this one, this is pretty much peak Flowers. That's what I like to think of it. Again, you can see, well, I'm, you can see the alignment, him. It looks like almost a half yard wide of uh, John Jerry. It almost looks like the, he's a tight end playing there. But back, uh, can you bring it back up to the start of the play? Okay. Now just looking there, you can see his base. His feet are fairly wide apart. He's got a decent width base, but he's leaned pretty far forwards. Yeah, compare that over with the Justin Pugh over on the right side, and 
Flowers looks almost like he's going to tip over at any time. Q looks like he could stand there and eat lunch like that. So, P Flowers actually does a pretty good job of getting back and out, you know, creating that pocket and, ma and matching Clark out to the outside. But when the time comes to make contact with him, you can see he still does the same thing he did his rookie year. He dips his head, bends at the waist, and his arms go wide instead of straight forwards. So he can't you can't really see his strike point. His arms go outside of the framework. Clark gets first makes first contact and really he's just completely negating all of his natural power. So, but even with all of that, he still does enough to bite Clark off, move him back to the inside where Jerry can help with him and then the ball gets out on just dart from Eli to Roger Lewis, which sets up the touchdown pass on the next play. So generally speaking, this is this is Flowers game. He's you can see the potential of what he could do, but what you get is just enough to keep the guy out of the pocket. Yeah, I think that's that's one of the things here is when we're talking about Flowers and, and his good plays and, and you can kind of talk about how maybe there's not always pressure all the time. Uh, I know uh, uh, by uh, football outsiders charting, the Giants are given up the third fewest or the third least uh, pressure on offense. Uh, they're only behind Oakland and New Orleans. Uh, and you know, you got to kind of put that in context. Some of that is not a lot of it is on the line. A lot of it is, you know, what we showed before on that third down play is how quickly Eli is getting the ball out. But when you look at and, you know, place some places that, you know, grade players say that he's he hasn't been as bad. But when we're talking about his good plays and there's nothing really all that impressive about it and there's a lot of flaws still, and the one thing we can say is he did enough to keep the guy in front of him. By I think by this point in Flowers' career, if you know he's going to play like a top ten pick, uh, he should be a little more dominant than us praising him for keeping the guy in front of him. At this point, it seems like his own. He's facing some pretty darn good edge rushers this year. You know, Von Miller. Uh, Bosa and Ingram, Frank Clark. But it seems like his own worst enemy is Eric Flowers. He works against himself almost as much as the defenders he's facing does. Do. Yep. We see it here. Even, like you said, even the first contact, that's not really how you would teach it. <laughs> and he, he does get pushed back a little bit. And if you just kind of, you know, look over at Pew, what he's doing at tackle. So he gets that little chip on Richardson, gets right back out to Bennett. I don't think there's any way I would trust Flowers to pull off what Pew did here, get a chip on Richardson and back back out to Bennett. No. Um, so, I mean, yeah, again, when we're saying this is one of his better reps, you know, that's, that's obviously not great. Um, okay, so we're going to let's get this one more in, and that is that's going to be a run from, from Seahawks game again. Flowers here, wide, and I'll, I'll let you take it away. Yep, uh, again, he's about half again as wide as uh, they are on the right side. And this time the run, the run does go his way. Just zone run right through that left A-gap. Pretty simple play. And on this play, Flowers is going up against K.J. Wright. He's a, what, did we, what did we say before, a 246-pound linebacker? Yeah, that's what he's listed as. So that, that's, what, that's what we'll go with. And this is a play where... It, Run blocking is supposed to be Flowers' specialty, and for most, generally it is. 
because he is a very, very strong man. And but on this one, he should be blocking right back up into the stands or planting him in the turf. But if we can get back to the snap. Now, as you watch, as he works up, his arms kind of flail out wide. And Wright is able to get that one long arm in and kind of hold him at bay. Now he's Flowers is able to get his hands up and around to make contact with Wright, but he isn't able to just latch on and maul him like you'd be like you would expect him to be able to do. Yeah, like I said, there's an eighty pound advantage for Flowers here. Yeah. And I, Wright is ultimately able to get off and make the tackle. I, it probably wasn't going to – the play run probably wasn't going to go much further because you had was it Cam Chancellor coming down, the other linebacker coming across. So the, Darkwell might have been able to get another yard or two out of it, but it still shouldn't have been Wright who makes the tackle. Right. There there should yeah. not be contact lost here. Yeah. That's it's leverage loss that's Flowers letting him get back to the inside. And we see other tackles in just in this division, in the, the NFC East. There's a lot of good left tackles. And this linebacker would have been about five yards over to the outside, yeah. I think, with some of the other guys blocking. It seems to me like one of the, some of the other guys that might almost be a dream, just one on one with a guy you outweigh by eighty pounds. Yep. It should be so that that's pretty much where we are right now. Yeah, I would say these these couple of plays I think do a pretty good job of kind of summarizing what Flowers has been so far this year. Um, and not definitely uh, not perfect and not flat out terrible either, which I think no. some of that's kind of what some of the arguments are, I think for, uh, I think that's one of the arguments Jerry Reese made uh, during his press conference that, you know, he's, he's improving, but sure improving it probably is, is really isn't enough to especially put the amount of, of weight they have on Flowers' performance and letting him keep going out there. Yeah. I. They don't really have a better option right now. So it, it, it is what it is, and he has improved. He has improved over his rookie year, even though he's making some of the same mistakes. It, he's Other areas have improved enough. He's limiting the damage. And he's... Improved over last year. Yeah, you know, I think the question is if they're going to see any further improvement from him through you know after this year, next year enough to warrant the fifth year option of his contract, or to just part ways, try moving him inside to guard, maybe. But that brings its own right. problems. Right. I say, yeah. I just, I'm not sure he's built to be a guard, and I don't get the the arguments to move him over to the right side because I think in today's NFL there is not the difference between blocking on the left side and the right side that yeah. there used to be. Uh, there's crazy good edge rushers coming uh, on both sides. Uh, we saw yeah. that uh, especially against against the Chargers this season when they had Ingram mm -hmm. and Bosa. So it doesn't really matter what side you're trying to block, especially when they move those guys around. Um, yeah, so next year, I, I, I don't think there's any way Flowers isn't on the team. I think he's got $5.5 million on technically the last year of his rookie deal. That's all guaranteed. Um, so if they cut him, he's $5.5 million. If they keep him, he's $5.5 million. So I would assume they keep him. Uh, the fifth-year option is, of course, going to be the big thing, which they're going to have to make a decision on this offseason. 
Yeah. Uh, I can't imagine they pick it up. That would that would be tough. The fly in the ointment is that right now their entire anticipated starting interior are free agents except for John Jerry. You know, Few is a free Few is a free agent. Weston Richburg is a free agent. DJ Fluker is a free agent. So can they afford to have that an, just another hole to fill? Right. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. It's is it worth trying to say there's you know consistency in keeping and not filling another hole when you know just throwing him out there again is going to be the same result, which is part of the yeah. problem. What we saw this year, they they didn't want to you know bring in Andrew Whitworth uh, because you know Flowers has been there and that. Mm -hmm. And using that as an excuse again it probably isn't going to be, you know, the greatest thing. No. So he's got. Uh, if I hear that, I'm just signing off of the internet before my computer explodes. Yeah. So he's got, you know, probably nine games left this year to to mm -hmm. prove why he should be the the starting tackle. Um, yep. I. Uh, I wouldn't expect him to be able to do that based on the 38 games we've seen from him <laughs> so far. Yeah. Um, so kind of this is this is where we're at. We know he's not the problem, but you know we we don't mean to 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 pick on him, but just how this whole situation has been handled, I think, just kind of shows what the main problem has been. Yeah. Spending resources and the resources just aren't paying off. If Flowers is drafted highly, but he isn't playing like ninth overall pick in the draft, or at least what you'd expect of the ninth overall pick. Now, granted, the success rate in the first round isn't what you'd expect or even hope it would be, but he just is not playing up to his draft position. Now, he... So right now, he does actually have the most snaps, at least according to Pro Football Focus, of or the second most snaps of any tackle without giving up a, without giving up a sack, it, or at least now that Joe Thomas has been injured, sadly. Sure, but we've, we've also seen that uh, we got... I mean, absolutely, the scheme helps. Yeah, a lot. the scheme helps uh, getting the ball out quickly uh, has really helped. And I think that's what they've kind of built around is getting that ball out quick. And that's and flowers that I think is aided by that. He's not yes. part of the reason the sacks aren't coming. I think scheming around him yeah. has been. Yeah. Um, so. so, yeah, so that's kind of what we're looking at. That's what we've seen so far this season. That's going to, what we're going to be looking for for the the next half of the season because I'm not sure what else there is to to look for uh, if we're being uh, completely honest because the season has not gone particularly well. <laughs> no. Um, so I think right now you definitely have to be looking at what is going to be a part of this roster next year. And I think for... A lot of it, I think Flowers is going to be one of the big sticking points of, of what they see is the potential and what they think of doing with him. So I think that's it's going to be a really important part of the team for the next you know year or two. Okay. All right. So uh, I think that's it. Uh, thank you guys for, for watching and uh, appreciate it.